Hello, I'm Tim Cockrell from Wise Media. I'm here with Dr. Jan de Kinder from the Institute of Forensic Science and Criminology in Belgium. I understand you're Director General of the Institute. Mm -hmm. And um, welcome for joining us today. Thank you. What interests me very much about some of the work that you've been talking about is that we have a number of identification technologies that have been used for many years, but DNA is something that is, seems to be being heard about more and more. And I understand you're very involved in developing the um, concept of a new evolution, possibly, for the use of DNA, not just in judicial cases, but maybe expanding it further. Could you but expand on this? Yes, I think everybody knows DNA from the TV series, Neil, what the possibilities are. But uh, when you're looking at TV series, it's always related to laboratory investigation. Uh, analysis which takes a certain amount of time, which does not always provide a prompt answer when a question is being asked. But I think now there has been a big evolution. We have now have systems of rapid DNA, which allow you to have a DNA available in about 90 minutes from a mobile system which can be transported to a different uh, location. Oh. I think that that's a major step forward and if you combine that issue <coughs> with the, the success, the current success of the DNA analysis on, on the forensic sides where we have huge databases available up to uh, 5 million people for instance in the UK which are in the DNA database. Mm. I think this opens completely new perspectives of which we have to be aware for identification of persons in the future. What about the privacy issue though that there must be quite very some very strong well, regulations and also concerns about if there are these massive databases what yeah. people are going to do with them? I think indeed that that remains a concern. On the other hand um, the forensic DNA analysis just focuses around that part of your DNA which is called non-coding. It means that it does not provide any information on how you look like. Are you going to, uh, are you ha do you have an ability to develop certain diseases in the future? Okay. So we are just collating very simply expressed two times 12 numbers from your DNA which do not say anything about your physical personality. Uh, I understand. But what about sharing this information with possibly other organizations outside of, of, of say, the police or, or, the, or, the, or the courts where perhaps it is much, much mm -hmm. more protected or much more relevant to a case? Well, I think we, indeed we, there we have to look what the legislative part we still have to undertake. Mm -hmm. um, on the judicial part, I can tell you that uh, currently there are a number of exchange mechanisms which have been put into place within the European Union where you have the Treaty of PROM which regulates the exchange of DNA between different countries. Mm -hmm. But there are also bilat bilateral uh, agreements between countries like for instance between Belgium and the US to exchange DNA profiles. Mm -hmm. So there are ways indeed to circumvent or to overcome uh, the problem of the privacy. Okay, I understand. And you were also saying earlier that there was, within this evolution of DNA, that it's becoming much more, more rapid to be able to, to get or extract the DNA from mm -hmm. somebody, which I would assume then points to more uh, real-time use of it. Is that, is that something that you're looking at? The units which are being developed right now allow you to have a DNA profile in 90 minutes, which I think 90 minutes, 90 really? minutes, which is something which is feasible for a direct decision uh, to be made. They also aim at systems which are sufficiently robust so they can be transported to different locations. Don't need a specialized operator to work with them and they give you a yes or a no answer. It's not, let's say, a bunch out of figures which comes out of the system. They just provide you yes or no, so the person who is operating the machine can uh, directly use the results. Oh, really? And is it, can you integrate it with other identification technologies? Well, I think that's one of the challenges for the future, uh, because they, the rapid DNA is now an evolution which is very important. Um, I think that the the time frame of 90 minutes 
probably will still be reduced in the future. And we also have to see how it can be interacted, how it can be combined with different uh, biometric techniques to provide the optimal results. Okay. And in your view, knowing this technology and this, this application, quite obviously quite in depth, what do you think the future is? Do you think it will become something of the norm to identify people through their DNA? Forensically, certainly, uh, but I think it will also open new perspectives when you talk about immigration, for instance. Uh, identification uh, of, of people being part of the same family by immigrating. Uh, perhaps also some, some border controls to identify criminals, terrorists, uh, are directly applications for the near future, I believe. Uh, but I think the, the, the possibilities are much broader. Mm -hmm. Where do you think, when you say broader into...? Well, I, I think that's something which has to, to still to be defined in combination mm -hmm. with the, the manufacturers of the current biometric instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least I would like to draw their attention to the yeah. fact that DNA is not just a player which was too complicated, sure. too difficult to use, yeah. but it's getting more and more feasible to apply it in, in a, yeah, let's say simple identification issues. Another thing, one of the old, older issues, and it's always attendant in everything, um, and certainly was in, in, for example, RFID technology, was cost. Mm -hmm. If somebody's implementing some sort of an identification system, it's got to be cost effective yeah. or it's got to at least have some sort of return on investment. Is, it, is the DNA system, is that, is that an expensive technology still or is it quite, does, does it fall within the bounds of the others, like it, biometrics it, for example? It, it remains an expensive system, but still it's in full development. It can still be miniaturized and I presume as more and more people are going to use it, that prices will also be dropping. As well, once, which is normal. If you look at the price for a current DNA analysis, where a factor of the price it used to be in the 90s, so th I, pre I presume that rapid DNA is going to follow the same evolution. But for me, this indeed this is one of the challenges for the future. Well, we'll watch with interest what happens in the future. Thanks a lot for talking to me. Thanks. Well Bye.